All right, guys. Today we're doing a new tutorial, and we're gonna do a M and M's character, and um, this is what the result's gonna be. It's gonna be like a little M and M on top of those candy cane characters, and I'm gonna show you how you guys can do it. So first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a brand new sheet of paper, and I'm gonna title it M and M character sheet. Ironically, ironically, I have to do this for work, so it fits, you know, my schedule. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a cane. So I'll normally draw something like this, a square, and then just stroke it. I know I have an action button for stroke, but what you can do is just use this thing right here. Stroke it, choose a color, turn it to black, set it at 2 pixels, and boom, you got a candy cane. Now, how do you get the rounded edges? Well, you can select this and get a circle. I'm all about getting things done as quickly as possible and as easy as possible. So I'm opening it up. And, you know, it doesn't even matter what type of circle you got. Just as long as you make a new layer, stroke it. I'm going to use this for now. I'm stroking it. And then from there, just adjust it to what you need. So I got to like this. I use Control T or Apple T to get what I need. And then I just fill it with some white. And boom, I got my top piece. That was really quick. And then I'll do the same thing. Bring out the bottom. And I'm just gonna cut off the top of this ellipse so it looks more right. And boom, what do I got? I got a really kick-ass version. And since this is the horizon up here, let me get this. Let me give you a quick demo. Since this is the horizon, this horizon lines go like this. They get bigger and bigger and bigger, and then when it gets to the bottom, it becomes a big circle. So since this is closer to the horizon line, we gotta make this more thinner. So let me just delete this out. And I'm gonna take this top circle here and take it and make it just a little bit more elliptical. This makes it look a little bit more real. Okay, see? Makes it look a little bit more real. I'm going to collapse this. Rotate this around. So now we're going to add the stripes to the candy cane. Now the best way, the best, best way to do this is to not use the damn pen tool, because I hate using the pen tool. So what we're going to do is use the brush. And how we're going to get this weird arc, which, you know, it's really hard to hit, just like drawing it wise, is I'm going to use the rotate tool. Yes, you press R. So when you press R, you can zoom in and get the right stroke your, your hand wants. So right now I'm gonna stroke it. Let me add one more layer. Let's stroke it. Oh, I like that. Maybe a bit more. But yes, that's about it. That's right on my head. Basically, you stroke it and then you undo till you hit the stroke that you that you're satisfied with. This is how a lot of um, car design drawers go. They you know, their drawings are perfect, it's because they've done one stroke 300 times. Yeah, I like this stroke right here. Alright, so I'm going to move down. Actually, I don't like it. Let me try, let me try. Oh, that one, that one's a beauty. Alright, so let's move down a little bit. Oh, that must be a perfectionist today. So let's slowly add it in. And then I'll space that a little better. And there you go. I got three little candy cane strokes. Now you press escape to go back to its original horizontal vertical position. And you just slice off these edges. And now take a look. We got ourselves one beautiful looking candy cane. And now to give it some color, I'm gonna Merge it using Apple E. Apple E allows you to merge from, see, I make one more layer, press Apple E, and it goes down into one layer. 
Okay, I want to fill these up, so I'm going to choose a nice light gray color. No, that's not what I want to do, but let's see. I'm going to let's see, merge it. Merge it one more down. And now fill it up. And bada bing, what do you got? You got three beautiful looking candy canes. And to make it even better, I'm going to select these using the uh, shift tool to select multiple. I'm going to run a burn tool. I'm going to quickly dodge it. So it looks like it's shiny just coming towards me. And then to make it dark, I'll use the burn tool to get an edge shape. So now we got a dark light thing going on. Give it more volume. That do, and then boom, we got ourselves a beautiful looking candy cane. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sketch over. I'm going to do an M and M, but I'm going to want to sketch it up a little bit because I really don't know what form I want yet. I know I want an M and M that's in a holiday flavor, but he needs to be doing something. So. I'm gonna make them. Um, let me move this a little bit. Just merge that up. I mean, not merge it, but stretch it out. And now I'm gonna work on my beautiful M&M. The first thing I know about my M&M is it's a circle. So let's make ourselves a circle. Do image stroke. A two pixels sounds good. This looks like a bottom M M. Now, one thing I like to do is always look up reference. Oh, let's see. M and M. M and M red. So there we go, we got some reference here. I like this one, this is a very simple one. We can use something like this. And what I'll do is I'll take a look at this and just, you know, skim it and then modify it from that position. So I have this m and M, and I'm gonna just try and work with it. Let's see. Oh, by the way, real quick, this is how I set up my pen. When I'm drawing, I like to keep the shape dynamics to, you know, with uh, the size being controlled by the pen pressure. I don't want to change the opacity. Like, some people like to put this to uh, pen pressure. I like to leave it off just for the drawing phase because I want it to be nice and thick. Because I want a nice outline. And yeah, let's toss this away. So, let's see. Now I need to get a good stroke, so that's a little off. Yeah, that's pretty good. Not bad. We got some eyes. I'm doing some measuring. I know the mouth is near the halfway line. And I know the hands are going to be like this. Oh, see, I'm not really spending too much time here. I'm just sketching it out, trying out in some ways. And maybe I'll give it a, like a nice little cute reindeer hat sort of thing going on, like an elf hat. You know, it's Christmas. And he's going to be skating. So let's give him some big, nice shoes. And we're going to add some skates to it. And I decided I didn't like the way his feet are, so I'm going to just delete this because it is just a sketch. And try another version of maybe his feet a little bit more outward. Maybe something like.
Yeah, moving it like this. By doing that, he now looks a little light. People can see that he's wearing some skates. You know what? What? What else he'll be? He'll be holding a um, hockey puck stick. Yeah. Yeah, that's some sports stuff. So, let's have him hold like a little skate. Notice how quick and loose this is. This is literally taking me seconds. You know, I'm not really too worried about it. I'm just trying to get the idea, the gist of what I want. So I'm looking at this, and I'm looking at how he has one eye higher than the other, lower eye lower than the other. I'm looking at this one right here. This is pretty good too. He always has this glazed look like he's smart and everything else. So I'm just trying to add that in. So maybe I'll keep his eyelids a little low. Maybe a little eye, eye, one eyelid is higher than the other. And you know, there we go. And then he has a smirk that goes all the way up. Or something like that. And then a standard M and M. See how I'm plotting out the M? And then I think his hands are just like going off to the side. And I don't know what hockey puck sticks look like anyway, so let me type it in. Hockey puck stick. Hockey puck stick. What does it look like? It's always good to use some reference that way it makes your job easier. You don't have to think so much. So it looks like a very long stick, much longer I thought for the whole thing. Okay, so now we have this nice little rough drawing. Now we're going to do some cleanup, and we're going to use the reason we draw this rough is so we can do positioning and getting the right shapes that we need. So I'm going to add a new layer, take the previous layer, bringing down the opacity to about maybe 30%. You know, do what you're comfortable with. I'm comfortable with 30%. And here we are. We're going to start drawing it in. Now, when we draw it in, this is where our rotate tool comes in handy because now we can get whatever shot we need. We just work at it a little bit. Now, there we go. That's one. Well, let me get the circle. I like the circle. Okay. So. I think I'll stroke it a little bit bigger, make it more thicker. So maybe about three pixels instead of two. Give me a nice good outline. Uh, I'll just delete that. Delete that right now. Try to get the basis of it. Maybe tilt it a little bit because his body's a little tilted. Yeah, I think this will be pretty good. Now I'm going to draw right over this. Go look at the red M&M &M again. Look at its arms, how its legs are, how its tubes are. And he's sort of... A very interesting look. I'm gonna rotate. We get his little elf hat going on. Let's see if I can hit that one line right here. Make it. And the other reason you want to use this tool is it allows your computer to pick up the nice natural strokes and rhythms and opacities of your your hand pressure. You can't get that with a pen tool. It's not really that great at it. So you see that? Yeah. It's better to make one strong line than a uh, whole bunch of lines with a bunch of shitty mistakes. You know? There you go. So you see that? And then I want to make a nice poofy one. So I'm going to make it Proof your eyes, you're gonna add these little things, these little dots and stuff. In my illustration days when I was a, a pirate of illustration. 
Now I'm going to add stripes to it because, quite frankly, it's holidays. This is how it looks a little too plain. Now, when you're making stuff and you're adding, you know, deco and art like this, it costs money to manufacture. So this is a demo. I get to play with it. But in real life, I'd have to think, well, this costs two cents more, and this is going to be repeated through Walmart a hundred times, and oh, I got to worry about cents and money. For this demo, this is perfect because I don't really have to worry too much about it. Now I'm adding the legs, working about, I'm thinking about the 3Dness, like how it's going to be made. I'm thinking about how it's going to have like two junction pieces, sort of. It's like going to be like three pieces, you know, three bumps. And then from that, I can just add straight in. So, boom. Yeah. Let me rotate a little better angle on it. I do the same with the other one. I like to use little indicators, little dots sometimes. It's real life things are textured. A really easy way to make texture is just to indicate. Drawing is a lot about indication and finding a way to represent three world 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 life with just 2D art. Okay, and yeah, let's see. And there we go. We got ourselves. Oh, I don't like that one. I'm gonna redo the railing a little bit. Okay. So now my little Eminem has some has some beautiful feet. And like every feet, there's gonna be some shoelaces. Did that real quick. I have an arm. I have a hand with some, you know, pose thing going on. And now let's work on his eyes. His eyes. So let's try doing a circle again. Layer, stroke it. And now you got some eyes. Tilt it, get the eye shape that you want. Actually, his eyes are way too thick. I'm gonna have to stroke it again, but make it maybe two pixels. No, even that looks a little too big. Let's stroke it up one pixel. Great thing about Photoshop is you can just retry, retry, retry. I still recommend you guys spend some time working with the pen, tightening up, you know, if you can draw really well freehand and drawing well in Photoshop, it's going to be a very easy translation. Now, some of my favorite artists I've seen when they got to Photoshop, I mean, they were just, if they were good at drawing already, they just became the bomb once they hit Photoshop. Like I remember one professor I knew, he just, he never even bothered to use the undo, to, undo tool because he was just already so good. You know, he was like, oh, this is so hard to use, you know. Like he said, I don't want to learn tools, just give me the pen, I'll get it done. And lo and behold, you know, he got it done. So I'm going to make some eyes. And let's throw out some eyes on the other side. Give him a little smart and snub. And then we're going to throw down the big important part his, his, his eyebrow, the center of his heart, as I always call it, because most people can tell a person's expression real quick from the, the eyebrows. And then the eyes. Then a little white little glimmer dot right in the middle. There you go. Now we're gonna draw some mouth on it. Let's 
take a look at the map again. So it has a, a tilt. And then a little dip. And then it comes back up. And then he has an overlap that shows. And there you go. We got a very cute MM. Let's draw some arms. And then we need to do a awesome hockey puck. So press U to get the line tool. And you can use the comma arrows to get bigger or smaller. In my next tutorial, I'll show my keyboard and how I have it set up. But let's see. Here's my hockey pump. And thanks to the magic of overlaying, it's like I'm doing a simple traceover. And there I go. I gotta press escape to move back. Now this is the part where I call I do cleanup. So let me collapse all these shapes I did. Cleanup is the process of adding underweights to all your drawings to give them more power. So like underneath here is where you would add a little bit more underweight. It just makes things pop out more. If you read a lot of comics, you see like a lot of old artists used to do that because everything underneath the outline has a higher underweight. I'm going to erase this right here. Um, collapse some more layers. Be happy with how it already turned out. So. Okay. So. Let's get rid of some of this. Normally for a product sketch, you can leave some of this underlay below because they're not really looking for it. They're just looking for concepts and idea. You don't need to pull it to the full render, but I want to have some fun, so. I mean, how else do you want to spend a wonderful Wednesday afternoon, right? So now I have this beautiful, angry looking m, &M and Get to know your sh uh, shortcuts, guys, because once you guys got it down, it just starts zooming away, and your work just comes faster and faster and faster. It's like anything, like sports or weightlifting. The first couple times, it's hard, but once you get down the shortcuts, everything is just second thought. You don't really think about it. So I'm going to draw the end real quick. And go with a nice little quick one. And there's the end for the M&M. And I'm going to throw on a real quick color here into the mouth. Let's try for a, maybe a, a little bit less dark one. Ah, maybe a little darker. I think I hear a dog screaming in the background. Yeah, part of the problem moving in Pasadena, I guess. Okay, and there we go. And then to further touch it up, we'll get rid of the underlay. And now we got this super, super clean drawing. Yeah, I mean, this is just great. Let me see what I've been missing. I forgot some of the, the lacing piece. I forgot some of the ski piece and I'll just do a really quick you know 
cleanup work. And there we go. Let's make it even, even more cute. Let's try. Let's throw in a little color. Just a little. Here's a new layer. Set it to multiply. So it doesn't affect the line drawing underneath. And some shadow, just like a real product, it's going to have a little edge. The great thing is when you've been drawing for a while like me, once you get in the zone, it's very enjoyable to do this, because, you know, you, you just everything sort of fits right, and you're just sort of in this zen state. This is actually the first couple times I've ever tried doing this while talking at the same time. And I gotta say, it's pretty fun doing it this way too. So I think I will be doing a lot more of these. Just add a little lip shadow. And I love to teach, so it's everything works. Right before I leave, check out my website, artofmongol.blogspot.com. I'm going to be posting more tutorials there. And, uh, you know, I do freelance. And I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. And i uh, see you guys till next time. And this is what we got. A beautiful, cute M&M candy cane character. Thank you very much.